I'm Dr. Evelyn Atia, and I direct the Center for Eating Disorders at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Once a patient's been identified as having a significant problem with eating, the first step is to identify the proper diagnosis because eating disorders are not all one thing. And then depending on how severely affected somebody is, there's a plan put in place to help someone achieve normal eating and normal weight. We know that malnutrition can have profound effects on someone's cognitive functioning and certainly on their psychological presentation. Actually, any underlying mental illness is likely to be exacerbated by malnutrition. Treatment can be very difficult. That said, Anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa are very treatable illnesses, and we do expect that patients are gonna be able to make changes while they're here. Not all of our patients are on medication. For the patients with bulimia nervosa, we often do think about using specific medications to help them with their symptoms of binging and purging. With anorexia nervosa, the case is quite different. Um, there is no FDA-approved medication for the treatment of anorexia nervosa which means that the treatment is largely behavioral. Binge eating disorder is another eating disorder that is associated with lots of morbidity. We worry about the lengths that people will go to to engage in their symptoms, whether it's overeating to the point where they don't feel comfortable anymore, whether it's subsequent uh, gastroenterological effects. Just like we do with anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa, we don't simply rely on medications to help patients get better. We think that a uh, behavioral management is gonna be needed in order for patients to see some real improvement in their symptoms. In the treatment for eating disorders, there are various levels of care, which really means various settings that are used in order to conduct that treatment. From the least restrictive to the most intensive, there is outpatient treatment, an intensive outpatient program, partial hospital programs or day treatment programs, and the highest levels of care include residential treatment or the hospital setting, where there are full-time medical and nursing professionals. Outpatient treatment means just that, someone is living at home. They may have several clinicians who participate in helping them make changes. Uh, they may have a therapist, they usually have a medical doctor, they may have a dietitian or nutritionist who's helping as well. Everybody has a role and everybody needs to be in good communication with each other in order for an outpatient treatment to really help someone the most. If outpatient treatment, pure and simple, is insufficient, then more structure with more supervision around meal times and sometimes the period just after meal times is generally recommended. These may be called day treatment programs or partial hospital programs. They may be called intensive outpatient programs. For those who've tried all of these outpatient approaches, more supervision still might be required. And there are two settings where individuals could get 24-7 supervision. The less restrictive of the two is called residential care, where uh, patients, always voluntarily there, work on their eating disorder symptoms under the supervision and support of staff. Um, meals are always supervised. Inpatient treatment is very different than outpatient treatment. If somebody is at an inpatient level of care, they're medically at risk and the treatment team needs to stay focused on medical stabilization and weight stabilization. Certainly when someone is medically unstable, it's hospital settings that are used uh, for those individuals. Those patients typically need to be in a hospital-based treatment first before they can go to a residential setting where even though it's 24-hour-a-day care, they're actually not going to be able to monitor blood work, vital signs as carefully as we can here. They're not going to be able to make some of the medical interventions that we can here. While everyone's treatment looks different, the components of care that a primary clinician may hear about and needs to uh, recognize includes medical monitoring, nutritional counseling, psychotherapy, both individual and group therapy, supervised meals, and other kinds of nutritional support. Well-coordinated care is essential for individuals with eating disorders. Treating a patient alone is often not successful. When a patient comes in, 
I'm a psychiatrist here, but I don't treat that patient by myself. We work closely with the nurses, with the social workers, with the therapists, with the nutritionists in order to help patients get better. And I, I, we think that that team-based approach is really what's going to be beneficial. It absolutely requires a multidisciplinary team because eating disorders are very complicated medically. Uh, they cause lots of medical problems that need to be treated by specialists that really understand this. At the program where I work, there's a team meeting every morning and the physicians and nurses and social workers and dietitians all meet together um, to discuss a patient's status and to move to next steps. I'm wondering if we can start with some of the nutritional issues around Emily. Are we watching her in the bathroom and in the unit the rest of the day? We hadn't heard any reports about any compensatory behaviors, but I always worry about it in, in new patients. There haven't been any reported concerns. She's been, again, very cooperative. Um, following directions. She was asking what we recommend about her getting back to sports. Right. And I know that's going to be hard for her because she became pretty quickly but still very engaged in the track team and in some of the activities that she and her friends were doing. What do we think? Do you think she can manage that or do you think we've got to wait a little bit? So we probably need a little bit more time so she would need to be above 80% of her ideal body weight in order to be considered for partial. So we might need to, to wait a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that she's approaching that. I was thinking we would start small. I know that nursing was going to take her outside to take a walk in the courtyard right. today. Yeah. She seemed to be excited Very about much. that. Yes. Um, and maybe we can start to have her go down to our cafeteria here to eat in a, a real world setting. The, the, the track, I think, is going to, we're going to have to wait on that to see how she does over the next couple of weeks before we make a decision. Yeah, no, that would probably be the safest. So the primary care clinician should not just throw up his or her hands if a specialty program is not in the area. Certainly try to advocate, try to identify one, but if there isn't one, they can set up a multidisciplinary team that communicates well with each other, that doesn't let uh, a patient be accountable to one but not to another member of the team, and can focus on normal eating and normal weight in a way that can be tremendously useful. When the eating disorder realizes that it's losing the battle, um, I think it kind of kicks in um, and wants that patient to uh, perhaps want to resist with treatment. You know, it's at that point where our patients need extra support from the staff, extra support, um, you know, from the team. Treatments for eating disorders are generally effective in helping people change behaviors in ways they may never have thought possible. So it's important for primary care clinicians to remember that treatment is worth it even when someone has tried treatment before because if the behavioral change together with the emotional change is allowed to uh, happen and be supported, we have reason to be very, very hopeful about all of our patients with eating disorders. Be aware, be vigilant, continue to help support and educate uh, patients around the importance of healthy eating and weight and healthy choices uh, when someone may be at a stressful juncture in their life or when their weight may be changing for one reason or another, a medical illness, a period following a pregnancy. A primary care clinician can be very helpful at paying extra attention to someone who may be vulnerable as old patterns could be reawakened and to really help a patient emphasize uh, the healthy choices needed to stay well.